Emmy-winning producers, Brent Miller and Norman Lear, are with us today. They won the Emmy last year for Live in Front of a Studio Audience when their special was about All in the Family and the Jeffersons. And this past December, they had All in the Family and Good Times. And now that special is nominated at the Emmys here next month. Brent and Norman, great to have you with us today. Norman, what was that like uh, getting another Emmy uh, in, your, in your famous hat? A feather in your hat uh, last year? Well, I, I never think of it as another Emmy. I think of it as an Emmy. It was uh, a great many years later. It was an individual uh, achievement with, uh, for the first time, my partner, Brent Miller. Uh, you know, I, these are one-off. So this was the Emmy because it was the Emmy of the moment. Brent, what was your experience like that night? Well, I mean, for me, it was, it was, uh, I love the way he phrases it, but it was, you know, leading up to that night, it was, it was very much a, a, a dream come true and, and, and more so. And I know that sounds like such an overused phrase, but um, it, to get it with Norman uh, w w was, was the icing on the cake for sure. Norman, last time you were on the Emmy stage winning Emmys, you had a lot of nominations in between, but was, uh, mid 70s. How did this one feel different than those in the early 70s? Uh, well, I'm a fraction older. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, uh, but you know, I, I, these are all individual achievements. And this one to be to share with Brent uh, was an altogether different and, and, and wonderful experience. Brent, on your team uh, that won that night, Jimmy Kimmel was uh, a key part of that. Uh, he's hosting, of course, the Emmys uh, coming up in a few weeks. What was he like to work with on this project? Jimmy is, I mean, he has one of the strongest work ethics I've seen uh, around town. I mean, he was very much involved every step of the way, including it being his idea to begin with, and made himself available anytime, anytime I needed him. And, and you know, as you can imagine, there's a lot of things that uh, go into play in putting something like this together, especially when you're doing it live. And I can honestly say that it was one of my greatest working experiences to date um, because it was such a collaboration. And uh, it felt like we were all in it for the same goal and all worked together to support each other to make it happen in, in what seemed to be effortless but I can assure you that there was a lot of effort behind the scenes. <laughs> uh, Norman, uh, uh, the one that you won for had the Jeffersons in it, along with All in the Family, and then you did Good Times this past December. What goes into the decision-making process, not only on which shows, but also which episodes? Well, it was pretty much uh, Jimmy's idea to do it. Did he have something to do with the selection of the episodes, Brent? He, we all did. We, you know, uh, we, we at Act 3 um, went through all of the seasons and every episode and then came up with a, a small group that um, collectively we all shared and decided what was the most relevant uh, for, for the times that we're living now and for the cast that we had and um, what made most sense. And those two were the ones that rose to the top. One, because obviously the All in the Family episode was a holiday episode, and it happened to be the most controversial episode of the entire series called The Draft Dodger. And we felt that, you know, that was so worthy of sharing again, not only because of how much attention it got all those years ago, but again, how relevant it was today. It was really, I mean, Norman can speak to, to the fact of him being able to see it again, but Mike Milligan, one of the original writers, was there that night. Um, to have him there, to have all of this happen during a, an impeachment of our president made it all somewhat surreal. And Norman, on this Good Times episode, you all surprised us yet again. After the Marla Gibbs surprise last year, you had John Amos as a guest star on, uh, what was it like working with him again? And what was it like for him to be opposite, say, Andre Brower playing his old character? That was a lot of fun. It was a great deal of fun, and you know, there's only one John Amos, and uh, uh, 
to see him there uh, experiencing what he was experiencing was the the treat of treats. It was so uh, it was so I don't know how to word it, but him standing there, he's a grand figure. And a and 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 a uh, and a romantic figure, uh, as I view him, and to see him in that piece that evening was extraordinary, and he felt it too. Wouldn't you say, Brent? He was so moved. Oh, absolutely. A bit in that role again. Absolutely, he was moved, and and the cast that was was uh was being you know that, that jumped in all those roles that night were equally as moved when he walked into the room during our first table read because it was something you know all of them grew up with this show and knew him from the show uh it was it was special all the way around 360 degrees and brett that teaming of andre brower and viola davis that it doesn't get any better than those two actors oh they're brilliant both of them normally what is there a moment that we had Jimmy Burroughs, you know, through all the years that I was doing my shows, Jimmy was doing his shows, we never worked together. And I could not have admired him more. You know, we had this wonderful relationship that never worked together. And suddenly here we were working together. And that was the treat of treats. Was there a particular moment on either special, uh, we'll start with Norman, then go to Brent, that just gave you chills, that, that, that really lightened you up when you, when you saw something on stage? Well, the moment when, uh, when uh, the, the Draft Dodger episode of All in the Family at the, at the table, when, uh, when Archie uh, is upset because, uh, because Mike wasn't going to, because Mike's friend was a draft dodger and he turned to his, uh, his buddy who was at the table, uh, whose son he thought was serving, but had gone to Canada. That was just an amazing moment. And uh, I could not have been more touched by it. Brent, I, um... I'm so amazed too about the fact you're not changing the scripts at all. Uh, speaking of that moment in that particular episode on any of these, you're, you're going with the original scripts uh, no matter what PC is now and no matter, because they are so timely still. Right. I mean, and that was the whole reason for agreeing to jump on board with this project. I mean, not only because of Jimmy, um, but the idea that, that we could truly pay homage to, these scripts and to the writers and to the actors that came before us. And, um, you know, there have been many people who've come to us over and over again, let's redo this, let's redo that, especially with the success of One Day at a Time. But when it, it came to dealing with All in the Family, Norman can speak to it better than I, but I mean, this was something, it was like the Holy Grail. We didn't want to touch that. And the only way we could touch that is, is to pay tribute to it. And, um, and I, I have no reason to regret it. I hope, Norman, you don't, but I think that- Oh, gosh, no. I was, couldn't have been prouder of it. It was, uh, it was really, it was, it was such a tribute to, to Norman, to the shows, and, uh, and to those writers, to see Woody Harrelson and Marissa and, to play. And Woody Harrelson and Melissa, my God, they were fabulous. They are amazing. What do you think, if they were still with us, Carol O'Connor and Gene Stapleton would have thought about these? I think they would have been re really touched by it. I couldn't get my mind off them during while we were making it. Uh, it was as if they were there. They would have been extremely touched by those two performances. They were so good. Well, Brent, I know the uh, the COVID thing this year really messed up things in terms of a possible May. Uh, event uh, if you were going to continue on the same timeline. So once we get beyond that and you're able to do another one, have you thought about what, what two shows would be next? We've discussed it, um, but we're still discussing because like COVID, uh, you know, things are changing daily. So we're just trying to, you know, be, be thoughtful and um, 
aware of of the the moments that we're living in and and hopeful that we're going to have another live audience. I mean, that's part of the beauty of not only is the show live for it's America, a of whether we'll be able to sit together. Yeah. You know. So it's, it's, uh, the, that's, that's a long way of saying we haven't yet landed on the two shows we're going to do, but we very much are thinking about it. Will they always be Norman Lear shows or are you, did you ever talk about other things as well? Well, I mean, it was, as Norman said, this was Jimmy's idea and it was his brand that he wanted to create live in front of a studio audience. But with that, you know, he loves the, the multicam format and there have been many multicams after Norman and, uh, and, and I should say still, while you know, we're still making them and Norman's still making multicams, um, you know, there, there's a lot of, of property out there to, to explore. So I, I can't say it's just gonna be Norman's, but for now, uh, they haven't wanted to go otherwise. I was interviewing Wanda Sykes around this time last year and I mentioned to her how great you know, she was last year at the Jeffersons and I said, uh, wouldn't it be funny if they did, if you all did a switch and did Sanford and Son, and instead of Sam, Fred Sanford being a man, it's a woman, it's Wanda Sykes. She would be phenomenal as like a Frida, Frida Sanford. She would be great. And, and we have, we have it, talked about it, various. You want credit on the screen for that? <laughs>